I went through 30 papers ranging from 2013 to 2017 and found the probability of every topic for IGCSE chemistry. Before moving along with the video, please hit that subscribe button if this is helping you in one way or another. We're so close to 10k subs, so hit that subscribe button and let's get back to the video. Starting off with the states of matter. In the states of matter, as you can see here, in we have found 30 questions in 30 papers. That means over 30 papers, there's been a question in almost every paper and hence the probability would be around 100%. Now what you're supposed to expect in states of matter would be something, you know, related to solids, um, liquids, you know, and gases, um, sorry, and gases. And this would include, you know, the different processes such as melting, freezing, sublimation, condensation. Several of the questions they'll ask you, you know, uh, the different stages or the different processes when it moves from solid to liquid, liquid to gas, and that's usually the first question. And also, along with the states of matter, they could ask you about diffusion. And within diffusion, you're supposed to know the factors of diffusion, and we know the factors of diffusion are the temperature and the mass. So usually what I've also seen is that question one is usually along states of matter, it's usually on diffusion, it's usually on states of matter, on solids, liquids, gases, the different processes. So that is question one and you are almost certain, which is 100% chances of it, you know, coming in your paper, okay? Now as you can, you as, as we go, you know, along through the whole video, you will see that almost all of the topics are above 100%. That means that almost all the topics I mentioned in today's video are likely to come. Some questions will, are, will come more than the other topics and the ones with high probabilities will mean a lot of questions will come in your paper on that, okay? So, you know, use this video as a prediction steps of videos like all these topics will come, you know, just the one with higher probability has a higher uh, chance or more questions, uh, you know, on it there are more questions that are possible to come in your paper, okay? Let's move on to the next one. The next one is the separation techniques. Under separation techniques, we have distillation, we have filtration, chlorination. Then they could ask us the different apparatus that you can use. You know, you use a burette, you use this, you know, uh, filtration, you use a beaker, you use this, right? You use a filter paper. Um, and then they could also ask you, uh, which is the main main tested one, is chromatography, right? Chromatography. So chrom there are many questions on chromatography, the solvents, you know, the different dyes. And as you can see, the stats here is that there have been 54 questions in the 30 papers. That means in some papers, there could be even more than one question, okay? And there's a probability of 180% chances of chromatography to come, apparatus type questions, crystallization, evaporation, the different processes in terms of distillation, filtration, and chlorination. So you need to have a look at that, a high chance of that coming in one way or another. Separation techniques are usually the question of the states of matter. So this would be like around question two and three would be separation techniques. Um, again, it could be four, it could be five. You know, that's how we would go with it. Moving on to the next one, as you can see, atoms and elements, it has 170% possibility. Um, and you can see we have found 51 questions in 30 papers that we have checked out. Again, that means that there must be more questions uh, in one paper. So there could be two, three questions in a single paper on atoms and elements. Now, what are you to expect within atoms and elements? Within atoms and elements, you would have questions like covalent bonds, the different covalent bonds, and in general, the different types of bonds, right? The ionic bond, the covalent bond, the metallic bond. You know, they give you two elements. You know, they basically react with each other. What type of bond do they form, right? Then another one is the structures, like is it, giant, is it a giant structure? Is it a simple molecular structure? Um, here is what you will be tested among atoms and elements. So there's 170% chance of this coming in one way or another, like um, they could ask you, uh, you know, tell us the atomic structure. So within the atomic structure, we have the protons, the neutrons, the electrons, right? State the number of protons in this element and so on and so forth. The neutrons, the protons, something like that, like the mass of the electrons, uh, the mass of the protons, the neutrons, the charges of them. So that comes under the atoms and elements. We move on to the next one. The next one is atoms combining. And as you can see, there's a probability of 240%, almost two questions per paper, as you can see. Uh, in the stats that it has here. And what you're to expect with atoms combining, we have stuff like bonds, and in this we would involve the dot and cross. 
So many times they would give you a diagram of dot and cross, which is correct, so on and so forth. Then with atoms and combining, they talk about strong and weak bonds that you have to also, you can talk about strong and weak bonds. Um, so in this case, you know, is this bond strong? Is this bond weak? Um, and also many times you need to compare it with the IMF, the boiling point, the melting point, and that's what comes under atoms combining. And as you can see, almost two questions every paper, 240% chance uh, of it coming in your paper. The next one is reacting masses and chemical equations. What comes under this? Here we have stuff like empirical formula, right? Empirical formula. We have stuff like the molecular formula, right? Molecular formula. We have questions like this, the empirical formula, molecular formula, find the empirical formula, find the molecular formula, you know, find the RAM. So under here we could say find the RAM, find the RFM, relative formula mass, find the relative molecular mass. These are all calculation based, you know, using chemical equations. Okay, so these are the questions and you can see there are about 32 questions in 30 papers so around one question every paper with a probability of 107%. Moving on, we have using moles. Now, I've only checked for six papers uh, but usually they always come almost 100% meaning one in every paper. There could also be two in every paper. With using moles, you know, they give you questions on concentrations uh, using the mole formula, the mole formula. Uh, and then having to calculate the RAM, right? So basically what you're supposed to remember is this formula that moles is equal to the mass, right? Mass over the RAM. And using this formula to calculate, you know, this, um, you know, the RAM, the mass with concentration, you know moles is equal to concentration times volume. So you could use that formula to get, you know, your values. So as here, you can see the probability of it coming is 100%. Moving on to the next one is redox reaction and you can see we have seen 35 questions in 30 papers so almost one question every paper again in this um, here so with redox reactions they ask you about the oxidizing agents oxidizing and reducing agents so you know what is the oxidizing agent in this equation what is the reducing agent in this equation then they could also ask you about the ionic equations so with the ionic equations they would give you an ionic equation which is the correct ionic equation in the ionic equation, they would ask you the oxidizing, the reducing agent. That's what comes in redox reaction and it has a probability of 117% chances of it to come. Moving on, we have electricity and chemical changes. Within electricity and chemical changes, we have stuff like uh, electrolysis simply, okay? So this just simply just means electrolysis. So within electrolysis, they usually give you a diagram and they tell you to you know name the anode the name the cathode here you would also have the ionic equations the half ionic equations you know you were supposed to craft a half ionic equation with these anodes and cathodes they have a diagram you have to circle which diagram is correct and you can see almost two questions every paper 193 percent chances of this coming this is on electrolysis questions usually comes in the middle of the paper Moving on to the next question and you can see this is 313% chance of it coming and we have energy changes and reversible reactions. So there's actually a lot that falls under here. We have stuff like bond, breaking and forming. So breaking and forming. Then we have stuff like endothermic. Is this reaction an endo? We have reaction like exo. Is this exothermic? Then we have the energy calculations. They give you the bond energies and, you're, and they give you an equation and you're supposed to find the you know, calculations of the bond energy. So many times you would get a list or, or a table here with the different values of bond energy uh, and then you're supposed to they give you an equation and you're supposed to calculate the bond energy. Also under this we have the um, chemical and physical changes. Is this a chemical change? Is this a physical change? You know, when you melt ice, is it physical? Is it chemical? Questions on that. And finally, also a big part of reversible reactions are equilibrium reactions. So the production of ammonia, right? Um, so that's a reversible reaction, you know, when the different shifts, when I increase temperature, what happens when I reduced pressure or I increase pressure, what happens to the equilibrium, you know? Is it as a shift to the right? Is it shift to the left? So there are questions on reversible reactions and it comes almost thrice in every paper. So three questions every paper. There could be one question on bond breaking. There could be another question on equilibrium. There could be a question on endothermic, exothermic. So this uh, has a big chance of it coming. At least three questions usually come every paper. So probability around 313%. The next one is the speed of a reaction. 
with the speed of a reaction coming from the name right here we have stuff that you know you have to talk about is like temperature if i increase the temperature what happens then i have surface area if i increase the surface area what happens then we have the concentration if i do something to concentration what happens to the rate of the reaction also under the speed of reaction we have the equilibrium Sometimes they would ask you according to the equilibrium, if I increase temperature, what happens to the position of the equilibrium? And you can see there's 52 questions in 32 paper, 30 papers, so almost two questions per paper with a chance of 173%. Moving on to the next one, again, 350%, big one right here. Again, three questions per paper is acid and bases. What comes under acid and bases? We have the famous lime water type of questions, you know, calcium carbonate, calcium hydroxide, um, the calcium silicate then also we talk about solubility we talk about pH of soil um, you know stuff like that in terms of farming solubility of this solubility of that solubility of carbonate solubility of sulfates uh, many times they would ask you to compare the solubility between you know this compound and this compound then we talk about the acidic is it acidic is it basic is it amphoteric and we know amphoteric what is amphoteric aluminium is amphoteric amphoteric basic uh, and acidic so that comes under acids and bases and you can see i found 106 questions in 30 papers giving a probability of 353 percent and i'm hoping I, you know how to calculate this probability simply what i'm doing is 106 over 30 times 100 and that's the likelihood of it coming okay moving on to the next one is the periodic table under periodic table it's 383 percent this is because it's more of a like a you know this periodic table is a big topic there's a lot that can come under this so the first thing that can come under this is of course the properties properties of the metals and the non-metals and the properties we have stuff like melting boiling point we have conductivity we have density we have appearance you know differences between metals non-metals how can i identify them then of course we, we have learned about the group one the group two the group 17 right the noble gases we've talked about all of this you could have questions on any of this right the properties of group one the properties of group 17 noble gases equations with these that all comes on the periodic table and you can see 383 percent chances of it coming so almost four questions per paper um, that i've seen in these 30 papers is from periodic table the next one is the behavior of metals under behavior of metals we talk about the reactivity series so they would say okay you react zinc with iron what happens you react zinc with hydrogen what happens does it displace and under this we come with reactions like you have the different types of reactions uh, with the group 17 you know does fluorine react with chlorine does it displace those are called displacement reactions right so we have the displacement reactions so under the behavior of metals comes a lot of these types of stuff reactivity series and you're supposed to cram the reactivity series all the order of all the elements and you can see almost two questions come in every paper so chances of 173 percent of probability of it coming in your paper so almost two questions for sure should come in around in your paper the next one is making use of metals. For making use of metals, I can see that there's 82 questions in 30 papers giving probability of 273%. What comes under making use of metals? There's stuff like alloys, you know, I mix uh, brass, you know, I, how do I form brass with copper, zinc, blah, blah, blah. Um, then we have the extractions, which is a bigger one, right? The extractions. Okay, I have the extractions of zinc, I have the extractions of iron using the blast furnace, the zinc blender, the contact process. Then we have electrolysis using aluminium. That is all, you know, using metals, right? Making use of metals. This is a big part. Extractions, they would ask you stuff about the blast furnace. They could ask you stuff about zinc. They could ask you, you know, different types of metals in terms of alloys, as I said. And of course, there's electricity of aluminium. You could ask, you could be told to write the halfway uh, ionic equation of aluminium. What's at the anode, what's at the cathode, so on and so forth. Big probability, again, almost three questions coming in your paper. The next one is air and water. Under air and water, I can see 87 questions in 30 papers, almost three questions per paper. 290% chances of the probability. With air and water, we talk about greenhouse gases. Uh, we talk about the greenhouse gases. So under this, we talk about CO2. We talk about the carbon monoxide. We talk about, um, you know, the oxygen composition. The nitrogen is 78%. CO2 is this much. Oxygen is 21%. That comes under air and water. Also under air and water, we talk about the contact process, right? The contact process. So on the contact process, what is the catalyst? Then we talk about sulfur. 
We talk about sulfur, we talk about nitrogen, we talk about acid rain, we talk about pH, and you know, all these are questions that are, revolve around that, okay? We talk about catalytic converter, I believe, also, so stuff like that comes under air and water, you know, that you form carbon monoxide, combustion reactions, incomplete combustion reactions, so on and so forth. Finally, we move on to, um, okay, then we have some nonmetals and their compounds. Okay, so in this, actually, we, we, we talk about sulfur. It's more similar to the top above one. We talk about sulfur. We talk about the pH of different um, metals, contact processes, the catalyst, and you can see there are almost three questions on uh, this. And usually, these are just properties. I have a metal like sulfur. You know, I can make sulfur dioxide. I can make, you know, this, this, sulfur trioxide, blah, blah, blah. That is what comes under some nonmetals and their compounds. And again, around three questions every paper, 88 questions in 30 papers. Moving on to the big one, organic chemistry. Organic chemistry usually comes to the end of the paper and you can see there's almost 470% probability. That means around five questions that should come in your paper, which means I've seen 141 questions in 30 papers. So five questions in this. Now under this, you would have, of course, the alkenes, the alkanes, um, you know, the cracking, the fermentation, the carboxylic acid, so on and so forth. You guys already know organic chemistry. You're supposed to cram all the reactions, the different catalysts, this, so on and so forth. And that's what you'll be tested here. You'll be tested on the structures, the diagrams. They could give you a structure of an alkene. They say, name it. What's the name of it? Blah, 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 so on and so forth. Very probable of it coming around five questions of it coming. Finally, we end with, uh, no, okay, we have a few more topics. We have polymers. With polymers, you can see almost one question every paper. Here, they would ask you on the type of polymer. Is it a polyamide? Is it a polyester? Then they would ask you how this uh, polymerization is made. Is it through addition polymerization? Is it condensation polymerization? So you get questions around this. You could also get questions around the structure of the polymer. You know, this forms a polymer, which is a polymer, uh, name the polymer, questions, so on like that, right? Um, so that is polymers. Finally, the last topic, which is in lab and chemical test salt analysis. This is more of like your practical or your ATP type questions. So here we would have questions on, um, you know, the group 17 ions, the reactions with the chloride, um, the chloride, the bromide, you know, um, the iodide, what colors do they make? And then we have apparatus, we have the burette, the different types of apparatus. We have the different tests, like the uh, hydrogen tests. We have the oxygen test, okay? What happens when ammonia is in, in damp litmus paper, you know? Stuff like that is what happens in this. And you can see it's not that commonly tested. Around 23 questions in 30 papers, 77% so chance of one question to even come in that paper. However, if it comes, it's very little of it that comes. And it's usually just like test of hydrogen, test of oxygen, chloride, bromide, iodide. The different apparatus, is this a burette, is this thermometer, is this a beaker, is this a measuring cylinder, so on and so forth. So those are the probabilities of all the uh, topics for our syllabus. Now let's have a look at it in order of importance. With that being said, this marks the end of the video. If you'd like to see a similar type of video for physics, economics, and so on and so forth, hit that like button, comment down below, and I will for sure make a video on that soon. So thanks guys for watching this video. Hit the subscribe button, share with your friends, and I'll see you in the next video. So here is the order of importance of every topic. And as you can see, the key means 100% is one question. So for organic chemistry, there's a chances for five questions, periodic table for four questions, so on and so forth. So you can prepare according to this and uh, look at the ones that are more important and do questions on them.